Let me know if this sounds familiar. You're at a party and you're the only single person. Everyone else has someone else, maybe a kid or two. You get funny looks, people start interrogating you. Why aren't you in a relationship? When are you going to find someone special? Don't you want to have kids? And if you're a little older, like over 50, maybe newly divorced, newly single, it gets worse. People looking at you feel sorry for you and they say silly things like, oh, what are you going to do now? You're not getting any younger and all the good ones are already gone. Awkward. How do I know that? Because I've been there many times. I've been single for years. And just for the record, I'm going to keep it that way for the foreseeable future. But let me tell you the three reasons I think society judges and stigmatizes single people. Number one, relatability. We like to hang out with other people that are similar like us. So we have something in common. We can relate to each other. Therefore, couples like to hang out with other couples because they share similar life experiences and they have a basis from which to connect. Also, other couples validate their choice for being in a relationship. It makes them feel like they've done the right thing and here they are doing what everybody else is doing. But around a single person especially a single person who has it all together and has a good time and a great life, it causes cognitive dissonance where the single person is causing the person in a relationship to possibly question their life's choice, especially if that person is in a relationship that leaves a lot to be desired. Around the single person who's having a good time, it's causing you to rethink your situation and it makes people uncomfortable. The bottom is relatability. They have a hard time relating to a single person because that person is having a completely different life experience than theirs. Number two, romanticizing and idealizing Couplehood, relationships, you look around, movies, shows, even the commercials on TV, packages on in restaurants for holiday dinners or whatever, vacation packages, everything is tailored towards couples. Everywhere you see happy couples walking hand in hand on the beach, playing happily on the green grass in front of a nice house. Uh, staring at each other's eyes over a glass of wine in a nice restaurant. Every image out there is portraying couplehood as the ideal situation. Well, to begin with, if you are selling something, it kind of makes sense to advertise to couples rather than a single person because you'll get two customers instead of one. But this constant bombardment of the idea that couplehood is the ideal situation makes the choice of being single the abnormal choice. Like something must be wrong with you if you haven't found someone to be with. Of all the isms out there, people stand against like sexism, ageism, any ism you can think of. Nobody thinks that singleism might also be a problem. Number three, being in a relationship is seen as some kind of progress, like you've matured, you've grown up, you're an adult now, it's some sort of an expected life trajectory when nothing could be further from the truth. Many people entering relationships don't have basic life skills. They don't know how to budget. They don't know how to prioritize their time. They don't know how to communicate. They can't have a mature conversation. All those things cause issues within the relationship, especially if one person is more mature than the other. So it's not true that you're more adult. That's why you're entering a relationship. When you're in a relationship, sometimes that forces you to grow up faster and become more mature, but it's not a prerequisite in real life. And so we see relationships with a very short life, marriages lasting two and a half years, huge rates of divorce, so on and so forth. So 
should you stay single? The first thing to consider, here's your three things I promised you in the beginning of the video. The first thing to consider is that being in a crappy relationship is not better than being single. In fact, it could be more troublesome. You're putting in time, you're making an emotional investment, you're making a financial investment in the wrong relationship, in the wrong person. And when you try to get out, it's another nightmare. It takes time to get out. So there is an opportunity cost for this unfortunate experiment. That is that you could be spending time doing something better for yourself, maybe career, maybe working on yourself. You could be spending time with a better person. You can be saving money. People hurry up to get in relationships just to be in a relationship. They feel the social pressure. Everybody around them is getting together with others and they feel like, okay, well, I have to settle down. I have to compromise. They find halfway decent situation. They think they can work on it and make it better. Occasionally it does work out. Most of the time it doesn't. Sometimes people double down and they commit fully, even though their heart is not into it. And then other problems arise. You've never seen people turn workaholics faster than those in unsatisfactory marriages. So why? Because at work, they get the challenges, the accolades, the attention, the validation, and they feel freer, more creative at work than at home. The wrong relationship will not solve your problems. In fact, it may create more problems because you'll feel stressed, uncomfortable. You might feel guilty. You might question yourself, doubt yourself. You might even get depressed. You might start misbehaving because sometimes people do. They feel justified to go find someone else outside of their relationship. There's so many ways to check out of your relationship if you're not happy in your relationship. A relationship will either propel you forward or hold you back. And if the relationship is holding you back, why are you in that relationship? The second thing to think about is whether or not you're actually ready for a relationship. Not everybody is. If you're half and a half, you see the benefits of a relationship, but you don't want to give up your single cause, singlehood because you can see the benefits of your singlehood. If you're wishy-washy, if one day you wake up and you want to be in a relationship and the next day you're glad you're single, you just may not be ready. You're the one that knows that and you should honor that. If you're not ready, that's normal. There's nothing wrong with you. You're just not ready. There may be other reasons like your career, your education, whatever. Maybe you're just happy being single and you want to stretch that time a little longer. That's okay. Don't let society force you into a choice that's not yours. The third thing to consider is learn and understand about yourself. Who are you? What are your values? What is interesting to you? What do you want your life to look like? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? But deep inside of you, who are you? You need to know this because as you're grounded in your authenticity, in your truth, you are stronger going forward. You can easily say no to the relationships that are now for you. So you might have to read some books, go to therapy, experiment, talk to friends, go on retreats, spend some time contemplating, meditating, whatever modality helps you dig into yourself deep, find out who you are. It took me a long time to figure out who I really am to accept myself and to not give in on the social pressure to be in a relationship. I love being single. I have a dog. I have lots of friends, a big social network. I'm happy as I am. But it was always on the back of my mind that all my friends are in relationships and I should be in a relationship. I should, I should, I should. I should all over myself, basically. When you do decide that you want to be in a relationship, there are four things you need to be looking for in the other person and in yourself. 
if you want to increase the chance of your relationship being a happy, satisfying relationship, successful long-term relationship. Four things that are not what people expect, like height, how much money you make, how physically active you are, what your interests are and all that. These are four things that are statistically proven to increase the chance of a successful relationship. And I made a video about those four things, which you can watch next if you're there, if you're curious. And if you liked this video, because it gave you some insight and it helped you understand yourself, like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can hear the next one when I put it out. Thank you for watching.